Welcome to Module 5, Well Intervention and Workover. By the end of this module, you should be able to recognize the components of a completion or production string and understand their function, describe how well interventions and workovers are performed, and describe why well interventions and workovers are performed. This module consists of five chapters. They are Components of a Completion or Production String Reasons for Well Interventions Well Intervention Methods Reasons for Workovers and Workover Methods Each chapter will end with a short knowledge check to confirm your learning. Chapter 1 Components of a Completion or Production String As we discussed briefly in Module 2, most well interventions are remedial operations performed on producing wells as they get older. This is because they require periodic maintenance. Some reasons a well may require intervention include mechanical failure, flow restrictions caused by sand production, a decrease in production due to the build-up of solid hydrocarbons, changes in reservoir characteristics, and to access additional hydrocarbon pay zones. Broadly speaking, well interventions are remedial operations conducted on a live well with the Christmas tree still in place. The term workover is generally used when referring to remedial operations where the well is killed, the Christmas tree is removed, and a blowout preventer is installed. Well interventions may be rigless or rig assisted. Workover operations are normally conducted using either a drilling or workover rig. As we have mentioned, well interventions are carried out with the Christmas tree and production string in place. There are items of equipment included in the production string that may be referred to during this module, so let's describe some of them here before we look in more detail at the reasons for well interventions and the methods of performing them. Production tubing is installed to allow hydrocarbons to flow from the reservoir to the surface or for injecting materials downhole. It runs from the tubing hanger at the top of the wellhead down to a point generally just above the top of the production zone. A tubing hanger is the component mounted on top of the wellhead which serves as the main support for the production tubing. The production packer isolates the annulus between the tubing and the inner casing and the foot of the well. This is to stop reservoir fluids from flowing up the full length of the casing. It is generally placed close to the foot of the tubing, just above the production zone. Downhole safety valve, or DHSV. There are a variety of downhole safety valves, but essentially it is a downhole device that isolates wellbore pressure and fluids in the event of an emergency or catastrophic failure of surface equipment. The control systems associated with safety valves are generally set in a fail-safe mode, such that any interruption or malfunction of the system will result in the safety valve closing to make the well safe. As part of the production string, downhole safety valves are fitted in almost all wells and are typically subject to rigorous local or regional legislative requirements. The wire line entry guide is installed at the lower end of the tubing. Its purpose is to guide wire line tools into the tubing and prevent them getting stuck. Chapter 2 Reasons for Well Interventions Now let's take a closer look at some of the reasons why well interventions are carried out. Paraffin wax and asphaltine, a tar-like substance, are two of the most common problems affecting well production. They both restrict production and, if not dealt with, can stop the well flowing completely. Both are part of the chemical makeup of various types of crude oil, therefore, depending on the region, they may be part of the production process. Thankfully, both can be dealt with fairly readily, either mechanically with scrapers run on wire line, or chemically by pumping and circulating fluid through the annulus. Coiled tubing may also be run inside the production tubing to deliver chemicals to the bottom of the well. 
Scale is caused by chemical precipitation from produced fluids. This is just like lime scale in a kettle. Scale buildup will eventually stop production, as the deposits can coat perforations, casing and production completions. Scale may be removed either mechanically or by dissolving it. Some wells will produce sand along with oil and gas which can eventually block the production zone. Because sand is abrasive, it can damage downhole tubulars and associated equipment, and it can also damage the production pipework and equipment on surface. The sand can either be removed mechanically using wire line or circulated out of the well using coil tubing. Chapter 3 Well Intervention Methods in this chapter, we will examine some of the methods employed in well intervention. Before we go any further, here is a reminder of what a basic Christmas tree looks like, as well interventions are performed through this. Pumping is the simplest form of well intervention as it does not involve putting hardware into the well itself. Frequently, it simply involves rigging up to the kill wing valve on the Christmas tree and pumping the chemicals into the well. If chemicals need to be placed more accurately in the well, then this will be done through coil tubing. Wire line is another well intervention method. There are three different types of wire line in use. Slick line, braided wire line and electric wire line. Slick line is often used for simple mechanical remedial operations such as pulling retrievable plugs. It may also be used for operations such as light fishing jobs, gauge cutting, setting plugs, deploying or removing wireline retrievable valves, and memory logging. In case you're wondering, fishing is the removal of broken or unwanted equipment downhole. Slickline uses a relatively simple pressure control device to allow operations to be carried out on a live well. Braided wire line is used for more heavy-duty remedial operations such as fishing stuck tools. Braided wire line requires a more complex sealing system on surface in order to maintain well control, but it does allow for much heavier duty operations to be carried out. Here you can see the difference between the simple slick line stuffing box and the braided wire line grease injector required to maintain the seal with the braided wire line. Electric wire line is used to run electrically operated tools into the well, such as perforating guns or tools which measure and report information back to surface. Coil tubing is used to pump chemicals directly to the bottom of the well, such as in a circulating operation or a chemical wash. Coil tubing is very often used to lower the hydrostatic head of the well fluid by pumping nitrogen in order to bring a well into production. It can also be used for tasks normally undertaken by wireline if the deviation in the well is too severe for gravity to lower the wireline tools into the well. Snubbing, also known as a hydraulic workover, involves forcing a string of pipe into the well against wellbore pressure to perform the required tasks. The rig up is larger than for coil tubing and the pipe is more rigid. A snubbing unit may also be used for removing the existing production tubing and replacing it with new tubing, if a well kill is not desirable. Note that a well kill may damage the formation, resulting in loss of production rather than increasing production. Today's snubbing units can be employed to provide a wide range of services. In essence, a snubbing unit is a hydraulic rig that can do everything a normal rig can do and can also perform under pressure in an underbalanced live well state. With the use of the snubbing unit's hydraulic rotary table, the unit can be employed for fishing, milling, drilling, side tracking, or any task needed to remove bridge plugs or cement or deepen wells. Subsea well intervention offers many challenges and requires much advanced planning. These interventions are commonly executed from light or medium intervention vessels or mobile offshore drilling units for their heavier interventions such as snubbing and workover drilling rigs. Chapter 4. 
Reasons for workovers. In some older wells, changing reservoir conditions or deterioration of the completion may require pulling out the old completion to replace it with a new one. In this instance, a workover rig will be employed. A workover rig will be used whenever the Christmas tree has to be removed to complete the planned operations. Other reasons for workover interventions include to install new equipment, to drill the well deeper, to cut windows in the production casing in order to drill the well horizontally, and well abandonment. Chapter 5 Workover Methods A workover or service rig is similar to a drilling rig but does not necessarily have all the same equipment. It is used if the completion or production tubing needs to be pulled out of the well and components in the completion have to be repaired or replaced. A drilling rig may be used if the well is re-entered to access more hydrocarbon bearing formations by deepening the well or side tracking. This refers to drilling at an angle to the existing well bore. Before any workover commences, the well must first be killed to stop hydrocarbons from flowing to surface. As mentioned in previous modules, killing a well is the process of replacing the contents of the production tubing with a fluid of sufficient density, called kill fluid, to overbalance the pressure in the producing formation. It is important when killing a producing well to avoid damaging the producing formation. There are several ways the well can be killed. The preferred method is circulating the kill fluid down the annulus and up the tubing because any hydrocarbons that arrive at surface go on to the production facilities. Alternatively, the kill fluid can be circulated down the tubing and up the annulus between the tubing and well bore, circulating the hydrocarbons to surface. Nowadays, the least preferred method is pumping the kill fluid down the tubing and forcing the oil or gas back into the formation, as this will inevitably cause damage to the formation. Once the well has been killed, the primary barrier is now the hydrostatic pressure of the kill fluid. It must, of course, be constantly monitored and verified. The workover begins by removing the flow line and Christmas tree and lifting the tubing hanger from the wellhead. Next, we pull out the completion string. The string will almost always include at least one production packer. If the packer is retrievable, it can be released and pulled out with the completion string. If it is permanent, then it is common to cut the tubing just above it and pull out the upper portion of the string and leave the packer in the well. When the new completion has been run into the well and the packer has been set, the wellhead and Christmas tree are put back in place and tested. The well can then be brought back into production by reducing the hydrostatic of the kill fluid. This is achieved by displacing the kill fluid from the production tubing, thereby allowing the well to flow. It may be necessary to produce the well artificially using a downhole pump or a nodding donkey. Well done, you've reached the end of this module. You should now be able to recognize the components of a completion or production string and understand their function, describe how well interventions and workovers are performed, and describe why well interventions and workovers are performed. Thank you for completing this training module. We hope this will help you in your workplace. Remember you can revisit this module at any time to refresh your knowledge.